I'm so excited to talk about this new concept that I haven't shared with anybody yet. And it's the saving secret hierarchy of wealth. And I go through step by step, action to action that you need to take to become financially independent. Hi, I'm Jamie with The Saving Secret, where I help you become more intentional with your money. If you're new to my channel, I help people save money and grow their investments to become financially independent. In today's video, I'm just so excited to share with you something I've been working on for years, and this is the hierarchy of wealth. When you're figuring out how to build wealth, it can be so tricky where to start and how to get started. And so today I'm going to go through all of that. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. One ask that I have for you is be sure to smash that like button. It really helps the channel out and helps it continue to grow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to find more content like this so you won't miss anything in the future. So the first action that you need to take is you need to save everything. And this is something that I'm so passionate about. This is the reason why I started a YouTube channel over a year ago is to get this message out that you need to make savings your default. You need to find a way to automatically contribute more to your savings account. And the most effective way to do that is to set up direct deposit to put more money into your savings account every time you get paid. Don't put money in your checking account. Direct deposit all of your money into your savings account. This is the first action, and it really is a paradigm shift and it really is going to be absolutely critical that you follow this because it's going to help you and train you to be more comfortable looking at your finances when your money first starts with your saving. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Don't just save first. Save everything. That's the saving secret. The second action that you need to take is you need to start to track your expenses. You need to look at this, figure out what your expenses are, start reviewing them. If you're not regularly looking at your expenses, you're going to be surprised at what you find out. That you may be spending things on Lamborghinis or handbags and, you know, dealing with the things that are tough. Andrew Lopez, you know, living your lifestyle, the high level. So it can be very difficult to figure out what your expenses are. But take time. There are so many free tools that will help track your expenses. And once you find your expenses, find ways to lower your expenses. That's going to be super critical because your expenses equal your lifestyle. And so you may be finding that you spend too much money on things that don't really matter. And so when you're doing that, find ways to find less expensive options that can give you the same fruit that you're looking for. And again, when you're lowering your expenses, this will help you be able to create a monthly budget. And so this is the second action, tracking your expenses and then creating a budget, a monthly budget. And this is something that's going to be paramount for the years to come. So those are the first two. The next thing you need to do is just because you're putting money into your savings account doesn't necessarily that you mean you're building your savings. So this is the next thing you need to do. You need to make sure that you have your savings starting to build momentum and that you have at least one month's worth of expenses plus a thousand dollars. So let me explain what this means. What this means is if you're putting your money all into your savings account, you need to move your money into your checking account in order to be able to spend it on regular purchases. So what you want to get to is a point where you can transfer all of your money at the beginning of the month. So for example, November 1st, you want to make sure that you have enough money in your checking account to cover all of your expenses and planned activities for November 1st 
while still having at least $1,000 in savings. So this is going to be extremely important to make sure that even before the month starts, you have an entire month set aside. You are no longer living paycheck to paycheck, but you are building a solid foundation that you have your entire month taken care of. Even if you have your entire month and zero money in your savings account, that's a great feeling, but it's going to help you move away from this paycheck to paycheck mentality. And so again, you're not living off your paycheck. You're living off of your savings account because that is where you're transferring your money and you're focusing more on your expenses rather than your income. So this is extremely important to you. want to get to a point where you have a full month worth of expenses plus $1,000 when the month starts. So that is a very strong foundation. The next part is once you're able to maintain a full month's worth of expenses plus $1,000, now you'll start to build up even more money in your savings. This is a great feeling. And you may be saying, well, what do I do with it? Well, if you have debt, student loans, car payment, credit card, this is where you put all of that extra money above the $1,000 in your savings towards that extra expense. So you're going to transfer everything out of your savings except for the $1,000 into your checking account. Obviously, you're going to move your expenses where they need to be, and every additional dollar will go towards paying off your debt because this is really important. You need to make sure that you have debt out of your life. If you're not sure how to conquer debt, I've done a whole separate video on tackling debt and it's using the debt snowball. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check that out, but it's extremely important to eliminate debt. Once you've had debt eliminated from your life, you're feeling pretty good. Maybe you're doing that Dave Ramsey debt-free scream, and that's great. But now you need to build up a stronger savings. This is where it gets really exciting. So because you've been following the savings secret and you're having your money automatically direct deposited into your savings account, there's actually no action that you need to do except for watch your savings grow. So you want to build up a strong savings to have at least three to six months worth of expenses in there. You can build your savings to whatever you feel comfortable with, but this is important to have cash on hand. Where I lost my job several months ago, I wasn't concerned about what I had in my retirement accounts or anything else. I wanted to see what I had in my savings account. And because I've been following these principles, I had money there set aside so I was not worried about my current needs. So this is one of the most important things. But because you're following the savings secret and you're putting your money in automatically to your savings, right? You're automatically building up that savings. And so this is going to be absolutely critical in building for the future. Once you've built up your emergency fund, three to six months, or whatever the savings amount that you've determined, the next thing you can do is what everybody wants you to do. It is super exciting. You can start contributing to your retirement accounts. And this is exciting times. You're starting to invest. You're starting to see the power of compound interest. But a word of caution to those people who haven't done the earlier actions, if you're contributing to your retirement accounts and you have not eliminated debt, built up your savings, I would encourage you to stop investing, stop contributing to retirement accounts because savings is more important than investing. Wait, what did that say? because savings is more important than investing early in your life, early as you're building your foundation. I've done a whole nother video on this. You're welcome to check it out, but I can cannot stress enough that if you have debt or you don't have a solid emergency fund or strong savings, you need to stop investing. But if you have that out of your life, I would encourage you to contribute 
to your retirement account. But I actually leave a, a caveat. This is not the time where you max out your retirement account. I would actually put a cap on your retirement account contributions at this point. I would not encourage anybody to contribute more than 20%. In my own personal life, what I do is I take advantage of my company match, whatever that might be for you or if you have one available to you. Take advantage of the company match. And then what I would also encourage you to take advantage of is a HSA. If you have a health savings account option, I would encourage you to take advantage of this because this retirement account is actually the best retirement account. The reason why this health savings account is such a great retirement account is because you can not only contribute your money tax-free, you can watch your money grow tax-free, and you can pull your money out tax-free. Yes, there are income limits. Just kidding. There are no income limits. There are limits with how much you can contribute each year, so it's not where you can contribute so much. But if you're able to max that out, I would encourage you to max that out at this stage of the game. But I would not encourage you to fully max out all of your retirement accounts because there's more important things that you can do with your money. So this is the part of the video that I'm going to get a little bit controversial. So I'm encouraging you to write your thoughts and comments down in the section below because the next thing I think you should do is to pay off your mortgage. Now, if you don't have a mortgage, obviously this isn't very controversial. You don't need to worry about it. But for myself, I think it's extremely important to contribute to your retirement accounts to a certain point, but then taking anything additional that you have and putting it towards the house. I've done a whole separate video on why I believe you should pay off your house first and why you should really work towards eliminating your house payment. It's a really great video. Feel free to check it out. And it goes through in depths of one of the reasons that I have for paying off the home. But that's what I'm working on currently right now is paying off my home. And in less than six months, I'm going to be able to have my home paid off. I had a strategic plan and my goal was to pay it off in a little less than three and a half years. And I'm actually able to make that happen in three years. So I'm really excited about this, really passionate about paying off my home. So that's the next thing you need to do is pay off your home. Once your home is paid off, then you can get into maxing out your retirement accounts, whether you have access to uh, IRA or you can contribute to a Roth IRA if you meet the income limits. You can contribute and max out that 401k. You can take advantage of other retirement account options and maxing those out. That's when it gets really exciting and you're going to have your expenses so low because you don't have a house payment, you have no debt, you're really able to quite easily take care of that. Once your retirement accounts are matched out, then you can find a way to start buying assets. And for me, it's opening up a brokerage account. For other people, it might be investing in real estate. It might be starting a business. It might be any number of different activities. But buying assets is really going to set you up for the long-term gain. And so in Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this is really how the wealthy become wealthy is by buying assets. But I want to make sure that you don't get ahead of yourself and try to skip any of these different actions that have already gone over. But once you're able to continue to buy assets and you find a way to get 25 times your annual expenses, you have reached the top and you have become financially independent. And this is the goal that I hope each of you are working on is finding a way to become financially independent. And I can promise you, if you follow all of these actions, you will become financially independent. It's a crazy time that we live in in 2020. And you may be thinking, there's no way that I can become financially independent. It doesn't make sense. It's not for me. Well, I want to promise you that if you start by saving everything and continuing to follow each one of these actions, you will become 
financially independent. I'm on this journey and I create content to help people become financially independent. I love sharing videos. It's one of the great joys that I have and I love watching people succeed with money. If you have any thoughts or impressions or things that you'd like me to go over into more detail or questions that you have, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I love to read them and I will respond. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out some of these other videos that go into more depth of some of the topics that I've already talked about in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.